Hello and welcome to Walk With Me, where I get the absolute pleasure to walk with you. My name is Jade and this is episode eight, the finale of season three, Yarraville. And I don't know what to expect today. It's overcast, as you can see. I'm at a place called Tottenham Railway Station. Um, I'm heading home. It's gonna be, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want to say too much, but I'm going to go and take you to where I grew up, where I really grew up, where I was born, my family's homes, my first place I move out of home, and I'm going to go and see my mum. So, strap yourselves in. Let's hoge. So, how are you all going? I hope you're all doing good. I don't know what to expect from today. It's going to be an interesting one. As I said at the top of the show, I'm home. Two episodes ago, I took you to Bacchus Marsh, where my family moved to when, uh, yeah, when I was like, you know, early teens kind of thing. But here we are today in Yarraville. Well, we're heading to Yarraville, through Yarraville, whatever you want. And uh, this is literally where I grew up. My first family home, second family home. And then I'm even gonna take you to the first place that I moved into when I left home as a teenager. And what a dive it is, let me tell you that. And I am gonna go and see my mum today. So there's that. I've got a couple of beers in my bag ready to go just in case I need them and um, we're gonna see where this takes us I think I'm at a dead end here I don't know if I actually am or not um, but what I'm gonna do is walk along a creek line today which will head to my family homes and then um, we'll see where we go from there Whew. I'm scared let me tell you I always try and do something kind of cool for the final episode and that's what's happening today. It is incredibly overcast today, but not, not cold or anything like that. So we should be okay. Um, close to all traffic. But I'm thinking, it says no entry, but you know what that means for me? That's like, in you go, son. And look, I can go through here. So we're gonna go down here and uh, see where this takes us. So, where am I? This is called, I think it's called, the official name is Corriott Creek. Creek. <laughs> we call it Stony Creek. This is, this is a creek. God, I used to come as a kid, catch tadpoles, lizards. I mean, we, we would scour this whole creek. This goes all the way to the Westgate Bridge. Where, that's where we're hopefully gonna end up today. I don't really know. I haven't been here since I was a kid. 
Yeah, but uh, looks exactly the same to me. I don't remember this path, but wow. There's gonna be a lot of memories today. So yeah, we come along here riding bush bikes and fucking around the creek. There's always tadpoles and frogs in this creek. Let's uh, scoot over here. Good to see it's not all dried up and, and I'm sure there still would be tadpoles and such in the creek. It was always brimming with life and it goes for a long, long way. So we're gonna follow this today. So where are we in relation to previous videos? So the last episode, Footscray, this uh, I got off at Tottenham train station. That's about three train stations away from Footscray heading further out west. And uh, yeah, that's Tottenham, tiny little place. And you saw all those massage parlors at the start. Let's talk about those. So they're not just, uh, you know, sports relief massage parlors. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what kind of massage parlors they are. It's amazing, there's like eight of them all together. I don't know how they compete for business. I'm guessing the girls just go from place to place. Um, yeah, but there it is, right in broad daylight. Sex trade in the middle of bumfuck nowhere at Tottenham, yeah? Ah, look at this, beautiful. What a nice place to be walking on. Stony Creek. And this leads to a place called Stony Walls which we're gonna go down. It's a very Mad Max kind of part of the creek. It's like flood drains kind of thing. We're gonna do that whole walk. Oh, what a view, look at this. Oh. Yeah, as I said, a bit nervous because I'm going to three different places I've lived. One of them I don't think exists anymore but two of them do. One of them's really unlucky. Well, two of them, kind of. But yeah, so we're going to, the first place I moved out of home, which was number 13, unit 13. Can you get any worse than that? No, not really. Then we're going to my family home where my mum passed away. So we're gonna do that. And then we're going to the home where I literally grew up for all the early stages of my life where I got attacked by a dog and had half my mouth ripped off. You're gonna hear about that today. Ended up in court as a, what, a seven year old kid trying to get a dog put down because of what it did to me, it mauled me. So we'll talk about that. And uh, we've got this beautiful scenery to surround us for this part. Wow. Lovely, jubbly. All right, let's oge. Tell me that ain't a home for snakes. Damn. <laughs> Haven't seen any uh, snake warnings yet. Look at me, just walking through. It's a bit damp, so I'm filming this a day later than normal because, let me tell you, the weather's been quite shite. Because we are heading into winter. Yeah, so I don't know what's gonna happen with the series. I guess we're gonna talk more about that as the episode goes on. Wonder what lives in there. I'm not sticking around to find out, how's that? But yeah, we've had a lot of rain, so you can see it's quite muddy here, very damp. All right, let's continue on down the path, shall we? Now this I don't remember at all. Um, it looks fairly new. We've got signage here, Stony Creek. Can you hear the sputtered marsh frog? Told ya, frogs. These are the little things I used to catch when I was young. So, pretty easy to catch along this creek. Nice. Don't recall signs like that being around, nor this bridge. I don't know where it goes over there, but we're not going that way. We're gonna hopefully continue and follow the creek. 
if that's where it goes. Maybe it is over the other side. Yeah, so you've got to cross over. Nice little tables here, that's pretty cool. And we're gonna continue down here and oge. As you can see, it's very wet along here. I've jumped off the path to go down here just to be close to the creek because it's so beautiful and calm, except for that fucking lawnmower running in the background, <laughs> which you probably can't hear because of noise cancellation. But uh, wow, what a pleasant walk. As soon as we get off this mud, Whoa, these things weren't here when I was young. Damn, progress, huh? God, I can't tell you how many times I've walked along this path or ridden my BMX. Now up ahead, we're gonna get to it in a moment, is the main road, Geelong Road, which heads out west all the way out. Virtually, you can get to Backers Marsh from here. This is one of the main roads out. And um, there's a storm drain up here. Now let me tell you, I'm not doing it today because I'm too old for this shit. But as a kid, we used to go all the way through this storm drain. It goes under the main road. Damn, look at all this. That's all new. God, this path is exactly the same. So yeah, there's a huge storm drain. goes under the road. Fuck. <laughs> Dumb kids, huh? We used to always play in the storm drains. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it is today. You know, you could do whatever you wanted. Your parents didn't give a shit. They just let you fuck off and do whatever you wanted. All right, so approach, as I said, it's a main road, so a lot of trucks and stuff. Oh, hope I can get out of here. So yeah, this main storm drain is just up ahead. You can probably see it through the gap there. I definitely wouldn't be walking through it now. Looks like it's, there's a lot of water passing through there. But let's see if we can get a good bird's eye view of it. There it is. So yeah, as a kid, we used to go through there all the time. You know, that's what you did. All right, let's go through here. And let's oge. So odd. Nearly every person I've walked past today has gone, G'day, how you going? It's a very friendly place. I just want to be left alone to film. Leave me alone, I don't want to talk to people. I just want to walk. So we're just walking through Bassett Reserve at the moment. We're gonna be heading up this main road here. So the first house I moved into when I was 19 years old. That's Oge. Okay, so we've already smashed 1.72 kilometers. And I see you sitting over there. Let me come and get you. Let's get on with this. You ready? That's Oge. So right now I'm heading over a footbridge over Geelong Road and heading to my first place of residence away from home. There's some tennis shoes hanging from the clothesline. <laughs> There's a lot of meanings people say for that. It's different a lot of places you go. So this bridge is pretty high up as you can see. Lots of traffic. 
And when I was young, somebody was actually murdered on this bridge by some dumb kids dropping things over the edge. They dropped a brick around about here. Down here, it went through the front windshield of an oncoming car. Pretty devastating for kids to do that. Actually, you can see in the distance up there, see the tops of the city skyline. That's how far out we are from Melbourne. All right, let's get over this bridge. So we're still on this bridge and through here, you could used to be able to get through here. You could walk through here. And my flats are just on the other side. We can't see, but yeah, a lot's changed. New apartments behind me. And uh, you know, I don't know why I don't expect things to have changed so much. I mean, it's, it's like a good 30 plus years since I've been here. All right, that's huge. Holy shit. There's actually a phone box that does it work. Oh my God. Well, what do you know? A Telstra pay phone that still works. That's ludicrous. So here is my old uh, straight Ormond Road. Now this all used to be shops here, but wow, all gone. This is where my corner milk bar is. You probably don't know what a milk bar is. Yeah, but it's like the corner store sells bread, essentials, milk, ice creams, chocolates, very small, overpriced, kind of a tiny version of today's 7-Elevens, yeah? So that's where I would get stuff that I need if I was desperate. Oh my God, nothing has changed. It's uh, not a flash area, let me tell you that, but it was all I could afford when I first moved out of home, because my family had moved to Bacchus Marsh, and I was like, I don't want to be here. I want to be back close to the city because my school was here, out in this area. I was able to get to school really easy from here. It's a pretty nice street though. I mean, houses aren't amazing or anything like that. And especially where you're going to see where I lived, it's a dump. So, uh, if it's even still here, it was next to a church from what I remember. Oh, I see somebody walking into the flats now. I feel bad walking in there calling the place a shithole, <laughs> but that's what we're gonna do. So let's, oge. Thirteen Ormond Terrace. <laughs> Unit 13, number 13. I thought I won't get in trouble. They've got cameras up here as well. So someone's monitoring. I'm not gonna go too far in. This fence wasn't here, you could get right through. But see that top one up there? Second one, that was my place. Number 13, I mean, you know, super ghetto. It was that fucking terrible inside. Really disgusting, but it was my first apartment, so it's all I could afford. Um, one bedroom, bathroom, joined kitchen and lounge room. And it was here where I really started to settle in and get my first job and stuff, uh, go to college and all that kind of thing. And something really unfortunate happened there. Let's talk about it. A couple of stories. So I was dating this girl, my first girlfriend, Karen, total dog. Scottish girl, the kind of girl that, uh, you know, you go out for drinks and she'd have far too many. And then you get home and she'd lock herself in the bathroom, th committing, threatening to uh, herself every time we drank. Just could not handle her alcohol. And uh, very frustrating because you constantly, as a, what, an 18 year old kid having to talk someone down off the the, the ledge, so to speak, every time they have a drink. And it didn't help that she drank cheap, shitty, 
wine, this wine called Star Wine, four bucks a bottle, just, ah. So yeah, anyway, uh, she would stay at the apartment every now and again and, and go home, wouldn't commit to moving in, thank fuck. But one morning she came over to the apartment before I got out of bed. And uh, that was a long time ago, before coming out as trans and nobody knew. And there I was in bed, wearing things that she didn't expect. And uh, she walked in and jumped into bed with me and got the shock of her life. And that was the end of that relationship. But we still kind of stayed friends. And she had a brother who was a bit of a criminal piece of shit. And uh, mysteriously, I got robbed not too long after. And they took my BC Rich White Warlock. I wonder who knew that that guitar was there because they left everything else except that guitar. Anyway, revenge came back later on because that asshole was in a go-karting accident and pretty much lost his hand. So, go fuck yourself. <laughs> there you go. There's a fascinating story about that place I used to live. Let's Oja! So the next stop on our walk today is uh, technically it's my third family home. So we lived in four different homes as a kid. The first one, I know where it is, but I don't really remember it because I was only, I think we only lived there till I was about two, maybe three or four. I yeah, I've only remember it from photos, yeah? So there's no point going there. It's a bit further away from where we are. Then we uh, moved to another place along here, which isn't too far. And then that led to us going to the place where I'm heading now, which is known as Ballard Street. And it's, uh, yeah, a lot of death around this house. So it's where my mum died when I was 14 years old. It's also where my nan died as well. We had a granny flat out the back and I used to look after my nan because her, the rest of her siblings, my mum's brothers, were just total fucking losers. They didn't give a shit about nan. So we took nan in and put her uh, in the little granny flat out the back. And um, I was the one who cared for her, changed her toilet, emptied her toilet. And if it wasn't for my nan, I probably wouldn't have really got into music because she paid me really well for once a week emptying out her toilet because nobody wanted to do that job. And that's how I started building my record collection of metal albums. That's it. Like if it wasn't for Nan, I wouldn't have ended up having so many fucking albums. But yeah, she passed away not long after mum died. Am I getting that right, the timeline? Oh, man. I can't even remember. My head's swimming today over this shit. And I found Nan dead. Having to go and get her prescription tablets and went and picked them up and came back in and she wasn't there. She's dead. So we're going to go to that house. I don't even know if the granny flat's still standing. I know the house is. So, you know what I'm going to say? It's Oge. So, this is Hungry Jack's, otherwise known in America as Burger King. <laughs> we call it Hungry Jack's, I don't know fucking why, but it's, it's the exact same shit, you see? Whoppers, all the same shit. It's just called Hungry Jack's. Strange, I know, but that's what it is, that's Oge. So there's the other end of that storm drain we saw before. And this is Crookshank Park, and wow, have they done this up a lot. Good Lord. This, there, there were no trees and stuff here. This is all barren when I was young. And this is where, fuck, I cut my foot open in that creek down there, catching tadpoles, stood on it barefoot, stood on a broken bottle, stitches, many stitches in my feet. But look at this, 
We're gonna come back along here later on and do this whole walk down here. But right now we're heading back this way. And oh my Lord, see here, this shop on the corner. This is the Kingsville news agent where I had my first paper round. Yep, I'm that old. <laughs> and um, it's where I saved up my money, all my money doing a paper round to buy my first computer, Commodore VIC-20. And I think I got a game called Mousetrap with it, cartridge-based VIC-20. And this is the news agent. That was my first job as a kid, getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning, delivering papers, and it's still here. I wonder if they still have paper routes. Look at this place. It looks exactly the fucking same. It's Oge. Damn, I used to come here to pick up my nan's alcohol every week. She'd order a slab of beer a week and every week or two weeks, probably two weeks. Holy shit, look at this. This, growing up, was our local McDonald's. Golden Arches are up there. Look at it, that's the old school McDonald's building. You can, you can, you can tell these things. And this was the McDonald's car park. Wow. God knows what it is, it's all closed down now for lease. Who would, who would rent this building? An old McDonald's building, yeah? I mean, <laughs> Looks like it was owned by a Cashies. Cashies is a cash converter, it's like a, a chain pawn shop here in Australia. God, they've got bollards up and everything. So yeah, this is the uh, McDonald's where I used to come as a kid when the cricket season was on. And who know, you know, you must know this. And you go to the counter, this is what we did here in Australia. You go to the counter and say, let's get out of the wind. Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And they would give you a free cricket poster. Just for saying that, or a Big Mac. It was cool. Man, look at that building. Unmistakably a McDonald's building. <laughs> all right. Let's go home. This place here. Let me tell you a story about this place. It's not a good story. This used to be a doctor's surgery. And there used to be a doctor who worked here called Dr. Seacorn. This was our family doctor. And my mum was a patient of this doctor for many years. And she would constantly complain about stomach pain, lower abdomen pain. And this doctor told her there was nothing wrong with it. For years. He was also one of the head doctors of the uh, Footscray Football Club. Had a lot of practices. And you know what happens when people have too many practices? They're not good at practicing because they can't keep up. This is the piece of shit that caused my mum to die. And I hope there's a place in hell for that motherfucker. Dr. Seacon, fuck you, you cunt. Right, let's Oge. Funnily enough, this building here used to be a bank, but looking at it now, with the uh, shades down, the uh, steel door, the way the blinds are down, that's a strip club, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> or a brothel, cameras up there, how is there a fucking strip club all the way out here? Well, I guess we've seen a whole bunch of massage parlors. It, it's gotta be a brothel. Look, camera's all over the fucking joint. Wow, <laughs> from being a bank to either a strip club or a brothel. I'm not looking down on it. You guys know what I used to do for a living. You know, it just, I guess you need brothels and strip clubs out in the burbs. It's Oge. This is where I spent a lot of time growing up. End of uh, primary school, into high school, before my mum passed away when I was 14. And then we stayed here for 
couple of years more and then sold up and moved to Bacchus Marsh. I mean, it's a beautiful street. It's very quiet. It's where I did my paper round. And see these trees, normally full of plums. And I would do my paper round. They're all plum trees all the way along here. And I'd do my paper round early in the morning, stop, jump up in the trees, fill my bag full of plums, and then I come home, have some delicious plums to eat. And this is also where all my friends were. So this street, we'd be out here during the day, after school, playing cricket in the middle of the road, cricket stumps, and all our friends would all come out, we'd play cricket along this street. Very Australian thing to do, yeah? And cars would come up, and you'd have to take the stumps off the road and clear the road so the cars can come along. We're getting close. When I was in America, I saw these things. Uh, people have these outside their houses for people to borrow books. I didn't know they had them here in Australia. Little street libraries that you have, people can come along and grab a book. Don't know how that works. I guess it's an honor system. Someone's been out hula hooping. Hula hooping, still a thing. Who knew? It's still a beautiful street. There's no denying it. So this is, just to let you know, I, I knocked on their door and asked for permission to film. <laughs> I just spent heaps of time in, I didn't, that was my sister's room over here, and this room here was where my mum laid for a year with cancer and they didn't tell us and we just thought she was sick and that she was going to get better so we just went along doing the things that you do as kids because you think she's just going to get better and there's going to be time and she didn't she just got worse and um And then like two weeks before she passed away, they took her to hospital and um, and I didn't leave her side. I was so angry, so angry that they didn't tell me. I was the eldest, so I was responsible, I should have known. I would have spent more time with her. She's the only one in my family who nurtured my creativity, my music, my art encouraged me to do all this stuff but her dad's a prick my sister was only two when she passed away and my other sister was two years younger than me so 12. this is all different there's a huge tree in here there's all cobblestone fence it's all different but the house is still exactly there and uh, the man who lives here said he's going to allow me to walk through the place and not film, of course, just for my own thing. Yeah. I'm going to, um, after we leave here, I'm going to head over to a park around the corner. I'm going to sit down and have a beer with you all. I miss you, Mum. It's okay. Wow, this here used to be a football ground. And this is so weird. All these new trees 
this whole place used to be surrounded by massive, massive trees, as big, not as big as those lights, but massive. There's a cricket pitch during cricket season, and a football ground here. And this is my second football team that I played for, which was Kingsville Footy Club. Before moving over the road, there's a football ground there and a club called Wembley Park. I started playing for that team. It looks like they've got the cricket pitch out in the middle there. Sun's starting to come out a little bit. Wow. That was really full on. Now, of course, I'm not gonna say the owner's name of my, my old house, but um, I wanna thank you so much if you are watching this. It really means so much to me, the, the conversation we had and you allowing me into your home. You don't know me from shit. That was really kind to take me through the backyard and see my old bedroom and when my mum passed away and the kitchen and everything, how much it's changed and how much it's still the same. I'm gonna sit down right here now. You know, it's a little bit windy, but the microphone's gonna do its bit. So let's show you that. Let's uh, take a seat. Uh, drop my bag and um, take off this silly bum bag. We're gonna have a drink. Oh. oh wow, the grass is really well kept here. Look at that, it's really well kept. I don't wanna hurt it or anything while I'm here. Always leave things better than when you first got here, you know? So, let me center myself. How you all going? You all going okay? That was heavy. It was really heavy, I have, just to let you know too, I've done 4.53 kilometers. Let's uh, get into the bag here, because I prepared for today. It's not stopping at a pub. And remember these sour, that sour beer I had from the last show. I found somewhere that sells them. This is the Sunny Boy Sour. Tap the lid, make sure it's not too shaken up. It's probably gonna go everywhere. We'll pop it slowly. Oh, hey, oh, it's a boy! <laughs> it's you, Mum. Oh, that's wild. That was really intense. So the kind people who live in the, my old house took me on a tour, showed me all the extensions. He's currently working on the house, all the extensions that are going on and changes and like so many things. Some things are still there, some things are the same and just little things like you know, the, the way the molding was on the roof in the lounge room, just I remember that so much. Oh, hardcore stuff. I hope you're uh, enjoying this content, seeing me fall apart. This is the final episode of this season. And I really didn't intend for any of this really to be going to Bacchus Marsh and last one at Footscray and now we're here in Yarraville. And I didn't expect to be taking you all to where I grew up and all this kind of stuff. It's just evolved naturally like that. Um, yeah, really confronting and to know that that was the last place I, I got to actually laugh with my mom and talk to her because once they moved her into the hospital, for pretty much the two weeks she was there, they she was on a machine keeping her alive. And uh, it's kind of hard to, I do have, I, I, I know this sounds weird, but I still have nightmares about the sound of her being on a respirator, keeping her breathing. It's, 
it was like Darth Vader at the end of Return of the Jedi. And uh, just, it sucked so hard. It's one of the reasons I, like my dad's still here. So I, I still blame him. I can't blame my mum. I, I feel like I had time robbed with her because they uh, heard that she was sick and then you find out just before she dies. So I have a grudge, as I said, because she was the one who encouraged me to sing and act and be flamboyant and try everything when my dad wanted me to play football and every time he caught me dressing as a girl, he was like, fucking that, so you do that again and you're fucked. And, You've heard the story before. And that house, a lot of that happened. A lot of that happened. And to have those wonderful, kind people allow me to go through that house there. Here's to you. I wish you all the happiness and joy in your life. What you did today is one of the most unselfish things I've seen, experienced another human being do for another human being you are a beautiful soul and i wish you all the most amazing things in your life and your partner and your child yeah cheers and the house looks beautiful it really looks beautiful so thank you again Right, so from here, my friends, I think we're gonna walk along this way and head up to the cemetery, which is not where my mum is. It's a, just a cemetery that's close here. And I think I told you a story about it in the last episode. Oh, the cemetery episode, I think I told you. Well, we took, me and my mates took our young brothers there and the cops came and <laughs> we ended up getting dragged home to that very house is where the cops took me to. And I had to answer to my parents and, one in the morning, getting out of the back of a police car. All right, let's hope. We'll see you soon. Cheers. This is the Footscray Cemetery, not too far away from where I used to live. It's only a short five minute walk and this is the place. This isn't where my mum is, by the way. This is the place. I told you in the <laughs> one of the last episodes, the cemetery episode, that we brought our brothers here to spook late at night. And there was a torch flashing around late at night. And we're like, there's someone in here. We gotta get out of here. So we ran up here, down there, ran out through that gate. We were like, we've made it. And we waved down a car thinking, help, help, help. I don't know why we did that. We were young, dumb, and full of something. The rhymes were dumb. And it was a cop car. Oh man. And they trundled all of us in the back and they took us home. And then we had to answer to our parents. It sucked. Anyway, I just thought we'd give you some context of where it happened. I'm gonna get out of here now. We're gonna head out this gate and I'm gonna call an Uber because I can't walk to where I need to go next. And I'm gonna go and see my mum. So the so next time I see ya, we'll be there. So let's oge. I'm here at the crematorium where my mother's ashes are laid. And uh, before we get there, I need to talk. So my nan passed away, as I told you earlier in this episode, I looked after her for a long time because my mum 
was the sister of four brothers. I'm not going to go into what I think of them because I don't want to be too negative. But when Nan passed away, my mum's mum, her brother's mum, they were left with the job to bury her. So I inquired today on if she's been buried. They didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be pretty fucked in the head to not even bother burying your own mum when left with the responsibility. And what happens at crematoriums when nobody claims to bury the ashes is they get scattered with no plaque, no memory. So I'm sorry if any of my family are watching this, but you had one job. So the ashes get scattered here at this pond, this memorial pond. I love you, Nan. You're one in a million. It's a shame four of your kids were fucking idiots. So now I'm going to find my mum. I always wondered what had happened to Nan. We never really found out, you know. We're too young to be told. I always just assumed they eventually came up with the money and did what was right. And it's a shame that, uh, it turns out that they turned out to be exactly what I always thought they were. Shit. <clears throat> right. So. We're gonna go find my mum. That's Oge. It's an incredibly overcast day today. I wish it was blue skies, but it isn't. So you make of it what it is, yeah? It is what it is, you know, you hear me say it all the time. And, uh, oh wow, we got police choppers up ahead in the sky. They're following me! <laughs> They're following me, man! This is harder than what I thought, man. I'm not going to show you it. I can't. Because I'm dead named on it. I'm dead named. And I don't want to put my mum's family name out there because it's the internet. But I'm going to sit down, I'm going to have a beer in front of her and talk to her 
I'll talk to you guys as well, but this is where she is. And this beautiful plot line, this little area. <clears throat> I used to come here and uh, and put guitar picks in the side of the plaque because flowers die I don't even know if they're still here I haven't got close enough to look yet <clears throat> alright I'm going to sit down I'll be with you in a second let's ouch here she is. That's what's left to my mum. No gigantic grave, and just this. She's in there. Her ashes are in there. Born the 12th of the 12th, 1952. Passed away on the 20th of the 11th, 1986. Ironically, the same day as Transgender Day of Remembrance, the 20th of the 11th, every year, where we count how many people were trans who were murdered for no reason. The irony doesn't escape me at all. I can't show you the plaque. I know I would love to. I'm dead named on it. It has my birth name on it. And my sisters and my dad. And uh, I don't want to drag them into this as well. I can tell you her first name is Denise. I love you, Mum. I miss you so much. Awesome. I remember the last time I was here, there were at least four guitar plectrums wedged in the side of this. They're all gone. Look, it wouldn't surprise me. I don't want to say it for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me that my family members removed them. Look. I've talked about this on my channel before. I took the wrong path. I became a very angry human being. I followed after exactly who my dad was. I treated people like shit. I've confronted those demons. I've accepted the mistakes I've made. I've apologized as much as I can to the people I may have hurt in my life. And I've tried to make as much of amends as I possibly can. Every day, I try my best 
to live up to the legend that is my mum. Do what makes you happy. We all rise together. Mistakes make you better. These are things that I learned from my mum and I wasn't ready to understand them for a long time. They are the embodiment of this channel. They're the embodiment of everything I stand for right before you. I care so much, much to my own detriment. I work so hard to lift people up. Even in my darkest times that you won't know about because you don't need to. Because that's who my mum was. She laid in a room in that house that we went to for over a year, knowing that she was gonna die and yet she still put everybody else in her life ahead of her till the very last day. She still did things for the fucking pony club and was just even her shitty brothers. She helped out with money. She put everybody ahead of herself. And a lot of my family, in my opinion, are dog shit. Rubbish people. In and out of jail. They couldn't even bury their mother. And sure, I've been a shit myself, but I'll tell you what, I ain't broken laws. I've done my best not to do, be a criminal, I'm sure I've made mistakes my whole life, but let me tell you, there's always been good intent. I've always not gone about things the best way, but you know what? I've tried everything I possibly can to be better, to have experience, <laughs> to have an opinion on something that I've actually experienced and done, no matter it being sex work or playing in bands or just some of the dumb shit, taking drugs, take, just jumping out of a fucking plane numerous times. You can't talk on shit unless you live it. I'm here today in front of you, my very loyal followers here on YouTube, the people who continue to support me, to bear my soul in front of you. I live every day to replicate this human being. And if I can even achieve 25% of what this human being was, and thoughtfulness towards other people, and I could die a happy human being. She was the goat. She is the goat. She is my idol. And I miss you mum so much. And I wish I could see the rest of them. The same thing for the rest of our family. <laughs> but they are dog shit. <laughs> Special lady in God's care. A God. Is that even on there? We weren't even religious. 
a special lady who cared for everybody else before herself. That's what it should say. Because that's more important than anything else. Fuck your religion. I don't give a fuck. It's nonsense. Put other people first. Treat people with kindness, dignity, respect. Call them by their fucking pronoun. Bow down. How much does it cost? Nothing to be nice. Be this lady. Because I tell you what. I'm sure she'd be absolutely shocked at what's left on this planet with some people these days. Anyway. I didn't bring flowers. I didn't bring another guitar plectrum to put in there. I didn't bring anything to leave behind. So I don't need to. I came here to tell my mum I love you and I miss you so much. And that's enough. And as long as I'm alive, I will do my best to live up to the high standards that you gave to so many people. And that was for nothing in return. What's that, Bob? What's that? You're telling me, she's telling me something. Hit the like, you lousy motherfuckers. Subscribe. Super chat, super stick. She would laugh at that. She had the most wicked sense of humor. It was so fucked up, it was like mine. It was so fucked. She had earrings all the way down her ears. She was like a gypsy, nobody understood her. <laughs> you know what? If she was here today, she would have stood by all the dumb shit decisions I made. It would have still been there for me. Because that's just who she was. And that's just who I am. My name is Jade. I'm my mother Denise's daughter. And I'm proud that I have such a beautiful mum. And I'm actually proud at where I am in my life at the moment. That I put people before myself. And this episode has turned out to be a lot more full on than what I thought. And I apologize to you guys, but It is what it is. Yeah? All right. I gotta finish this and just have some quiet time with my mum.
Well, what a time jump that was. Here we are back at Stony Creek, back where we were before. And uh, yeah, I've calmed down a little bit now. We're gonna wrap up this walk. We're gonna do this uh, Stony Creek Historic Trail. Hopefully, we can get to Spotswood Railway Station. I would love to be able to make it there so I can just jump on a train and then head back to uh, North Melbourne and then get home. It is 4.30 in the afternoon. Let me start my timer because, no Siri, no Siri, resume. My watch says that I've done about five and a half kilometers today, but it's been a lot more than that. Oh, piss off Siri. Siri's answering me on my fucking watch. I don't want to say her name, she'll fucking answer me. But the watch says I've done about five and a half kilometers, but I've done way more than that. As I've started using my phone for the count at the end of the show, you would have seen. So that's a much better representation of how much I've walked per episode. So here we are. And uh, yeah, they've really made this park so much nicer than when I was a kid. There was a shithole, it was just the creek, you know, no, no beautiful paths and stuff like that. Look at these houses over here, they're all kind of new until they're new developments. So we are gonna walk along this entire path. Now, let me cover a couple of things. I know at the start of the uh, episode I said we're gonna go to one of the other houses I lived at. I looked it up previously, it doesn't exist anymore. So I'm not gonna go to the trouble of walking down to that place if it doesn't exist. But I'll tell you some story about the place while we walk along this creek. And uh, yeah, I can at least tell you stories. But yeah, it looks like it's, it was knocked down. Maryston Street, I used to live there. That's uh, before we moved to the, the house you've already seen when my mum passed away. Oh wow, look at this. We've got some kids out here probably trying to catch frogs, tadpoles, whatever. So, some things never change, yeah? Some things never fucking change. Look at that. <laughs> I love that. A generation still out here at this creek, Stony Creek, trying to catch tadpoles and frogs. Which you saw, there's you know, there's plenty of them here, so it's a thing. <clears throat> but yeah, I decided not to take you to that house because it doesn't exist now. It's uh, it's too flat now or something like that. So there's no real point going there to have a look at that place because it doesn't exist anymore. But I can tell you some stories about it. <clears throat> and they should be entertaining enough. But we're going to oge, so let's oge. So that's the creek that we started at yeah, today. And would you look at this. I'm so glad I came this way. Fuck me. Here's my primary school. This is it, isn't it? It is. Oh my Lord. Now it's never a good thing to film schools, right? But this is my primary school. See those goalposts there? Those to play. The Kingsville School Footy Team. We won two premierships. So you've heard me talk a bit about footy. I played a lot of footy in cricket when I was young because it's the Aussie thing to do. And uh, wow, that's my school. Kingsville Primary School. That all used to be fucking grass. Look at it, it's all, looks like AstroTurf now. I was a part of the Little Athletics team school there. I was very athletic when I was young. <clears throat> yeah. I can hear somebody playing drums up ahead. There's a drummer in our midst. So that's my school. I was going to go to a school reunion a few years ago here at Kingsville Primary but didn't do it. 
and uh, probably your best, probably the best because who would remember me? <laughs> I'm a totally different person now. Gender and everything, you know? So there's that. This is beautiful. They've really spent a lot of money on this. You can tell. And I spent so much time here when I was young. I'm getting off the beaten track a little bit, just walking across here. <laughs> I'm guessing more cyclists over here on that path. Wow. So the creek runs along here. This is just beautiful. And my other house where I grew up for most of primary school is just up here, which doesn't exist anymore. But let's tell you a story about it as we inch closer to the area of it. So, I think it was my seventh birthday. I can't even be exactly sure. A seventh or eighth. And I got a pair of roller skates for my birthday. And I was stoked, I loved roller skating. I was a big roller skater. Used to go to a youth group and roller skate. And I used to think I was the king of shit at roller skating. Different times, folks. <laughs> and um, I got my first pair of roller skates. And they were mint. And uh, we lived next door to a lady named Phyllis. We'd lived there a long time. And she had a dog called Shifty. <laughs> Shifty. But Shifty was awesome. We used to pet Shifty here. We used to go next door to Phyllis. She'd make spiders. You know what a spider is? A cola, Coke with ice cream in it. And it all foams up. And um, see Shifty all the time. Me and my two, me and my one sister back then, because my other sister hadn't been born. And uh, look at that, beautiful, beautiful creek down here. So nice, look at that. <clears throat> anyway, so Shifty, yeah, the dog was called Shifty. And I got my roller skates and I was so excited about it. I went next door to show Phyllis my new roller skates. She was an elderly lady. Like an auntie kind of thing that lived next door to you. And as I roller skated into her driveway, Shifty was at the end of the driveway and I don't know what the fuck went wrong that day, but something drove Shifty to another dimension. And uh, I always think now it was the roller skates, the sound of the wheels or something. But Shifty just ran at me, full pelt and jumped and grabbed onto my face and tore here, inside of my lip and the top of my lip. And I needed, it was all up 35 stitches, taken to hospital. This is a dog I'd known for years and years. Now, the breed of it is a mix of is some kind of Heinz variety, yeah, anyway, <coughs> the uh, ranger came and they were going to put it down because I was only a kid, you know, I've still got scars, you can see them, if you look really close, you can see the scars, <coughs> they've healed pretty well though, inside you can see them, <coughs> but as a kid, I ended up having to go to court and testify against Shifty. What a name, I'm <laughs> thinking about it now, Shifty. But as a young kid going to court to testify against a dog, and it ended up getting a good behavior bond. My dad wanted to fucking kill it, right? As you would at being a parent, for it ripping my face apart. <clears throat> and there's a street down there that's my old street. We're not gonna go down there because the house, as I said, doesn't exist. But Phyllis's house still exists where Shifty was. <laughs> so, got a good behavior bond. Um, it was allowed to live, they didn't shoot it. And um, ironically, six months later, 
an old woman was walking past the front gate of the house and had jumped the fence and mauled her. And Shifty ended uh, his existence right there and then. It was the end of Shifty. <laughs> good behaviour bond, bye, gone. Two year good behaviour bond, finished, you know. And the, the funny thing was, I had these huge staples throughout my lips and it was for my birthday i got roller skates right and my mum bless her she totally pivoted and turned my birthday party into a horror party and i went as frankenstein with staples in my face and she was such an amazing human being she had this thing where all the kids had to sit around and she put green colored spaghetti in bowls and turned out the lights and had and they had to feel around and guess what the stuff was rubber gloves filled with stuff it was crazy as a uh, pin the head on the zombie <laughs> my mom was such an inventive human being just always made the best out of the worst situation and it was sick yeah and again I hope well you know what I don't hope I actually know that I'm doing the things that she would do yeah if she was here she'd be proud oh wow look at this in the middle of nowhere what the fuck is this I feel like I'm in the Blair Witch Project for kids. What the fuck is going on here? Look at this shit. Get the fuck out of here. This is like, this is Blair Witch for children. It's children's Blair, what the fuck is that? <laughs> All right, let's Oge. We're heading down to Stony Walls. I don't know if they're still there, but we're gonna find out. All right, let's march, let's oge, let's do it. Let's oge. This is like the old Yarraval Scouts Hall. And as kids, we used to joke about this place. Look, it looks all boarded up. We used to joke about this place being a fucking pedo place. Oh, girl guides now, it says. Looks boarded up, doesn't it? Looks dodgy as shit. But then aren't all scout places, you know? Don't those kind of people always gravitate to those places? Much like churches, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I want to cast dispersions. Oh, I can see over, wow, that's still there. So over here, you can see these mounds. This is a BMX jump track. I broke my collarbone on that track. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me explain. So, I was riding my BMX one day down Somerville Road and saw this really cute girl. Now, I, I know I'm young at this time. I was always into girls. And I was looking and I must have veered close to the, the gutter and I wrapped my shoulder around a telephone pole, just smack, hit a telephone pole. Did my shoulder in. Didn't go to the doctors about it. I thought it was okay, yeah? Just, it'll get better. And um, continued to play sport at school and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh wow, there's my old kindergarten. It's still there. Holy shit, that's where I went to kindergarten. Damn. They've really built this place up. It looks so nice. Okay, getting back to the story, the yarn. So I wrapped my shoulder around a pole, thought I was fine. Went to school, played football and all that. It was still hurting a lot. And then I went down to the BMX jump track, came down from a jump, Ooh. and fuck me, something went, oh. Turned out my shoulder had been fractured for a month. <laughs> and I ended up having to wear a brace to school. A a full 
brace underneath my clothes. Yeah, what can I say? I was a tearaway, troublemaker. Look at this community composting depot. This wasn't here when I was young. Look at all this. How cool is that? I don't even know if I can get down to stony walls anymore. So, this is stony walls. Let me show you. We're gonna see if we can get down here because this is the path I was gonna follow all the way down to the Westgate Bridge or to the golf club because this is what we used to do. Ride our bikes, come down here to Stony Walls. So this is where the creek ends and Stony Walls begins. Should we jump the fence and do Stony Walls? I think so. That's Oge. Okay, so we're at Stony Walls. <laughs> now, as a kid, think about it. This is a long time ago, you know? This is a place where I spent a lot of time. Riding my bike down here, going up and down on the BMX, doing jumps and shit. Wasn't all fenced off like this, yeah? Uh, and pretty much you follow, this is where we started with the creek which is gonna go all the way out to Westgate Bridge. You'll probably remember Westgate Bridge from the uh, episode where I was on the ferry. And we went underneath to Williamstown, the huge bridge that collapsed while they were building it. That's where this heads out to, which connects to the Yarra River. It's all connected, my friends. It's a web of deceit and lies. <laughs> Excuse me, that was gross. So, stony walls. <clears throat> I don't know how far I can go along here before I uh, can't. And it's probably gonna be a little bit boring, same old view, but I feel like I need to do this to relive this connection as a kid and all the mischief and mayhem we used to get up to. And just past this underpass here, this is where I found a bike once. We used to jump across here and jump back and, you know, oh my God, there's a duck in there. Look at that. Can you see the duck? <laughs> Let's go under here. It's going to get dark. Hey! Oh! Hey! Oh! Daylight come and me want to go home. Day oh! Day oh! Daylight come. Me want to go home. Ho! Oh! <laughs> so it looks like this is flooded here. So I'm gonna have to jump up. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Be careful. You're getting to see it. What's in all here? Oh. Ah. We're still walking along here. But you could used to be able to walk along there. That's really flooded now. Got some ducks down there. It's starting to rain a little bit. God, like you've got a camera that can handle the rain. We may have to end this episode early. Look at that sky, not looking good. Oh. All right, let's see how far we can get down here and we'll oge. It's oge. Well, I didn't realize that there was a actual path over there. I probably would have followed that, but I, I almost feel like I'm living out that inner kid in me all those years ago walking along here. I mean, I really want to get back down there, but I don't know how much of it is flooded. And you got to remember, I'd be riding BMXs along here, doing this path. And this leads on to a golf course eventually. It's like someone's torn down this fence. Here to get through, oh, look at that bird. Nice. 
So, it all leads to a golf course. I'm probably gonna have to slide down here. So, I'll turn off the camera and I'll get back down here and we'll continue. Well, quite a few birds down here. Exotic little birds. Look at that one here, over there. Just flew out. You know, it blows me away, yeah? As a kid, this place was always teeming with kids. <laughs> you couldn't come down here without kids being everywhere, right? And now, I'm not trying to be that, that person, yeah? But this is the day and age we live in. Kids got video games, iPhones, iPads. This don't look like much fun. But to me, when I was a kid, this is everything. <laughs> I spent so much fucking time down here. Jump, like to do a jump, to like get your bike up here, pedal down, do a jump over the lake, up, back, jump over. That was the shit. That was the stuff, man. We lived for that. <laughs> I'm definitely showing my age. And at least we get to walk along here now it's not flooded. It's still starting to rain a bit. Gonna have to duck for this one, it's a bit low. Never used to duck when I was a kid. Quack. Graffiti under here, yeah. <laughs> oh! As you can see, it's starting to rain, get a bit heavier. Hopefully I can make it to where I need to go before the rain gets too crazy. Because I'm kind of out in the middle of the nowhere, stuck in the devices of mother nature, of whatever it wants to serve up to me. Oh, look, there's a little hole there. I could get through there if I really wanted. Oh man, come on rain, go away. I don't want my mic to get ruined. Oh. All right, that's oge. Let me tell you, it's not smelling so good down here. Uh, I wonder what that pipe does. <laughs> Shit pipe? <laughs> well, it's not it's slowing down rain a little bit, so that's a good thing. I can see the Westgate Bridge ahead. So the goal is, Gonna try and walk towards Spotswood Railway Station. So we're gonna pass through the, I think, Westgate Golf Course, under the Westgate Bridge, and then on to Spotswood Railway Station, where we can wrap up, jump on a train, head back to the city, and finish it up. Man, I filmed a lot of stuff today. This is rad. I know it's not as beautiful as some of the other scenery, but there's a story today. This is a homecoming. I've been able to confront a lot of things today and talk openly about things I haven't for a long time. So this is the Westgate Freeway here. You can see they've got all these noise barricades up to shield residents from the onslaught of traffic. There's a Looks like an on pass, yeah. Heading onto the freeway. <sighs> God, I can't even get out of here if I tried. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep going, I guess, and hopefully lead to where I need to go. I'm looking at the map as we're talking right now. Yep, we should be able to. I remember this well. This down here leads to the golf course, and uh, another place that I spent a lot of time. Look at all this graffiti up here. 
I spent a lot of time riding my bike all the way down here to the golf course. Why? Because there was money to be made. Fishing golf balls out of the creek and selling them back to dudes who'd lost their balls. Kind of ironic that I got into the sex industry later where I got to kick dudes in the balls. <laughs> so we're heading to another little bridge here. This is Williamstown Road. We're going under. This is a long one. We'll take you the whole path of this. Yo! World divided! No one's united! World divided! Everyone's blinded! World divided! Never united! World divided! We're all slaves in a world divided! Nice reverb. <laughs> All right. I can see the bridge ahead of me. Let's show you it as we come out. This is Melbourne's iconic Westgate Bridge. It's enormous. Yeah. All right. That's huge. see in the distance I said that rabbit just run up there we got a rabbit over here too heaps of wild rabbits there's one just sitting over there now I don't know if I need to get over the other side of this creek you see that rabbit over here look there goes one up the mountain <laughs> they're everywhere now this is the golf course I don't know how I'm gonna get over this side I have no idea I didn't think about it. Now I can probably get through up here. Oh, more rabbits over there. Look, there they are, see that one? Another rabbit there. Wild rabbits every fucking where. That's Oge. Okay, so it looks like I'll be able to get out up here. Maybe cross over at some point. Look at some guys golfing over here in the midst of the shit. <laughs> oh shit. Whoa, nearly slipped over. The mud here is so slippery. Fuck me. Uh, it's really like heady and thick and slippery. Gotta be super careful. Look at that mud there. See that mud? Super slippery. I can probably get out over that. Is there barbed wire on that? I definitely can't jump this. You guys are coming on a fucking adventure today, let me tell you. Oh, I can get over that. But, how do I get over there? I don't fucking know. I can cross over that bridge, possibly. Let's oge. Wow. So, let me tell you this story. The path I had to take to get across that river and get over this other side, it was arduous. I'm breaking the law right now. I went a part of the fence, part of the side of the road which I shouldn't even be on. And I'm trying to get over there to the rail station, but here I am, stuck. You know, I can't get over this fence. So I'm kind of walking until I can find a way through. Not ideal, let me tell you. It was a mistake. I should have crossed over long ago when I had the chance. But now I'm here under the Westgate Bridge trying to find a way through. I can probably jump this fence here and get onto the golf course. It's probably the easiest way. But yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm, I'm probably already going to get in trouble. I don't know if this actually leads to a way out. So 
Here's a low part in the fence. Maybe I can do that. We're gonna give it a go, let's oge. Okay, well, here we are. I've escaped the maze. I'm a bit pooped. I just broke the law a bunch of times. So what happened was, just so you're in on what went down, I, didn't, I couldn't film it, it was too much. I was uh, trapped behind this fence. Couldn't actually get onto the golf course. They're doing all this construction there. So I had to find a fence low enough to jump over to get into the golf course. And where you last saw me, that's where I got over the fence because I need to get to the railway station. And I'm pretty sure it's just down here. So as you can hear, I'm pretty fucked. <laughs> so we're gonna oge, see if I can get to this railway station. Let's oge. Well, here we are at the end of another walk with me. This one has been off the charts. This is the finale, episode eight of season three, Yarraville. Heavy stuff, let's cover what we did today. Goodness me. We started off at Tottenham Railway Station, where I grabbed a few beers. We went past some massage parlors. We went all the way along the creek found my first flat that I lived in when I first moved out of home. Then we ended up at my old house where my mum passed away. And that was incredible. Thank you again to the owners of the house who took me through the house. I can't thank you enough. It was incredible. Thank you so much. Then we headed out to the crematorium and I sat and went and saw my mum. And then we uh, ended this by walking all the way along the Stony Creek, all the way through Stony Walls up to Westgate Freeway, the Westgate Bridge. I got stuck behind a fence. I fell over, I've bruised my knee. There's a huge lump on my knee. It has been mental. I'm here at North Melbourne Railway Station to close this out. And to make things worse, the police just came over and took my details because I was stupidly vaping on the platform. Can this show just end? right now i really just want to get the hell out of here so look i don't know what's going to happen going forward with this series because winter's coming yeah and it's the weather's going to get progressively worse look at it out there you know there's the city behind me the weather's getting worse and worse so i don't know how much i can film we'll talk about it on a on the channel i hope you really enjoyed this series yeah i hope you got a lot out of it i have closure today i feel good I'm going to go home and relax and chill. I'm so glad you decided to walk with me today and I get the pleasure to walk with you. My name's Jade. Remember, stay awake. Do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better and we'll all rise together. Let's go, Jay. You ready? Boom.